Hello and welcome to episode three of How to Beat Digital Distraction and Write More. My name is Andy Tattersall. I'm an information specialist at the School of Health and Related Research at the University of Sheffield. So in this short series of podcasts, I want you to deal with the problem of digital distraction information overload. As um, the American poet Theodore Rufkis once said, a mind too active is no mind at all. So in this point, we're going to look at, um, as this episode, we're going to look at um, an organic approach to dealing with information overload and digital distraction. So we all have times when we feel incredibly overwhelmed by the uh, amount of information around us. If you're in the process of trying to write, it can be really frustrating um, to feel that you're not getting anywhere due to competing demands that are trying to get your attention. So what you end event- eventually end up with is this kind of state of continuous partial attention. And this is a theory uh, that was developed by Lynn Stone that our attempt to be more productive, we end up trying to multitask and, and we only end up skating the surface of our tasks. We don't do it very well. So if you're writing a PhD thesis or even a journal paper, you can make that task much harder by only giving it partial attention. And your PhD and your research deserves your full attention. So the good news is there's a few things you can do to help you focus. Um, First of all, you have to acknowledge that you're in this state of partial attention. So once you accept that, you can start to do something about it. Um, And a classic example is when perhaps you're in front of the TV, you're watching a program that you're interested in, but you're also on social media, you're surfing Instagram, you're you're checking emails, and you're kind of not really doing both. You're giving it partial attention, and that's how it can how it works. So the first thing you can do is turn off your mobile phone. In fact, go one step further and leave it at home. Uh, of course, not everyone can do that due to parental and other personal reasons, but if you try it. Uh, you'll notice uh, that you've removed a major distraction in your working day. The next thing to look at is your working environment. And there may be a case that there's people who will distract you. So um, you're trying to get this important task finished and you've got people in your office and they're just distracting you. They're wanting things from you and it's, it's, it's making the job harder. So the first thing you can do is put on your headphones, listen to some suitable music, maybe tell your... Uh, office colleagues that you need to focus and you don't want disturbing and hopefully they'll respect that if you want to go a step further explore the option of working somewhere different for the day perhaps in your institution's library even a public library which are a great place to go and work Um, most universities have silent study spaces so explore the option of working in the silent space and as for your cluttered mind there are a few things you can do So first of all, just take some time to relax, switch off and do nothing. And that time spending sort of doing nothing may be just the five minutes that you need to calm your mind and just relax. You might need periods of time that are a little bit longer. So you might feel that actually working your way through a Netflix box set It might feel like wasted time, but if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed and you don't have an immediate deadline looming, then it could just be the thing to get you back to tackle your writing tasks. Of course, we don't recommend you to do this all the time. You know, you'll never get your work done. And there is a fine line between being strategic and just procrastinating. So it's important to remember that and don't get over-reliant on just kind of kicking back and just watching TV. You've got things to write you've got a, a thesis to write, then actually just think about how how you uh, go about these things. Um, another thing to consider is the option of meditation or pursuing mindful activities. And meditation is not as hard as you might imagine. imagine. Um, you just need five minutes on focusing on your body, doing a body scan, you know, thinking through your body, starting with your toes, working up through your legs and your body to your head, just seeing how you feel as you go through and relaxing and it will calm your mind Um, and it will just give you the energy to hopefully tackle that research project and there's lots of resources out there that can help you meditate and chill so I'd suggest that you start by looking at Headspace or there's Calm or there's Buddyfy Um, 
to keep pushing on and trying to write when you're feeling overwhelmed and tired is only going to increase the anxiety levels. Um, so taking a little bit of time out, being strategic with this, <coughs> excuse me, um, and just being there just to be still and quiet the mind can help your writing productivity and more importantly, your well-being. We also know the benefits of exercise on our well-being. So where possible, take a walk to help clear your mind. Think through some problems. Give your eyes a rest from the computer screen. And this may be with your PhD supervisor or a colleague or a friend. There's no need to sit in front of a computer screen. Um, you know, consider going for a short walk just to discuss your work. Um, it's carbon neutral. It's good for your health and fitness. Now, appreciate this has been recorded in Sheffield, which is not renowned for the greatest of weather for uh, much of the year. But as for the weather, unless it's a force 10 gale and deep snow, the old adage can apply that there's no such thing as bad weather, only the wrong clothes. So hopefully you'll find that useful. A few organic approaches to dealing with the issues of digital distraction and information overload. And um, my name is Andy Tatsall. And uh, you can find out more about me and the podcasts via the links attached to this podcast. Thanks for listening.